The Morris Minor mobilized Britain after World War II. Its affordable price, simple mechanicals, and wide variety of body styles meant there really was a Minor for everyone. And along with the MGB and the Mini, it also kick-started the classic car scene in the UK. It was one of the first old cars just to be preserved for the passion of it. They make a great starter classic, and most popular Minor of all is this style, the post low light cars made from 1951 to 1971. But just because they're cheap and plentiful doesn't mean you don't need to go into one with your eyes wide open. So here's everything that you need to know if you want to buy yourself a post low light Morris Minor. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers and tech. So check the video description for full details and to enter. The Miner has long had a reputation as the DIY friendly classic, and that's great, but it does mean that many of these cars will have had some home repairs over the years that might not be to your exact standards. A good way to check, for example, is along the sills, which are a known weak spot for rust. Look for any patches, and a good way to tell is the shut lines along the bottom of the doors and where the doors meet the front wings. Now, this is a British car from the 50s, 60s, and 70s here, so it's not going to be Lexus level shut lines, but nor should they be grotesquely out. They should be even the whole way down and they should be fairly flush with the line of the body. The A-pillars can also rot, so open and close the doors several times on both sides. Do they drop when you lift them away and do you then have to lift them back into place to get them to latch? Another rot spot is the bulkhead where the top of the wings, the bonnet and the bulkhead itself all meet. And again, if it's been rotten and they're not welded up straight and done properly, the bonnet isn't going to sit straight. And a good way to check for that is for any washers or space that have been put on the bonnet hinges. If the bonnet won't sit straight on its own, there's a good chance that the bulkhead and the spots where the bonnet mounts aren't straight, haven't been welded properly, and that is complex work to rectify. Inside, lift up the carpets. Look at the seat mounts, the front cross members, the inner sills, and the floor pans themselves. They're all rot spots on miners. Where the suspension mounts up should also be solid. So check the front cross member underneath. You should have no qualms about jacking the car up on it. It should be rock solid and check the rear spring pans as well to make sure those are rock solid. Thankfully though, any rusty panels or chrome work are not a problem. Everything's available for miners brand new from all manner of parts suppliers and it needn't be expensive. But then again, the more rust repair you've got to do, particularly if you're farming it out, the more expensive it is gonna get. The wood frame Traveller Estate, meanwhile, is arguably the most popular of all Morris Miners, and with good reason. It looks delightful and it's practical as well. But that ash frame has even more spots to look out for than on a standard miner. Being exposed to the elements, it can rot, of course, and a good way to tell if the ash frame on a Traveller is starting to rot are little dark patches dotted along it. Look also for moisture on the inside of the glass, and when you open those rear doors, do they drop? And then do you have to lift them back into place if that is the case that means the wood is probably rotten and or warped. Now you can buy all the wood brand new and repair sections for it but be warned buying just a few sections could be a false economy because if just some bits are already rotten the rest won't be far behind so you are probably better off in the long run just buying a whole new frame for a traveller. Now you can do that, but you're going to be into around 1500 quid for the framework alone and if you want to pay someone else to fit it for you you can double that. So you can save a Traveller no matter how rotten it is, but you are going to pay for it. The Tora Convertible, meanwhile, is a fantastic classic for the summer, but there are a number of saloons kicking around that have been converted to a convertible. If you want an original factory convertible, the chassis number will feature the letters M-A-T in it, and if it doesn't, it's a saloon that's been converted, not a pucker minor Tora. There's nothing wrong with the converted cars, because most of them have been done pretty well, otherwise they wouldn't still be around, but don't pay a premium for one that wasn't an original convertible, and if it has been converted, look at the standard of the work that's been done. The roof itself should operate smoothly, it shouldn't creak or groan when you put it up or down, and there shouldn't be any rust or buckling in the metal framework. Are there any signs that it's letting water, for example, into the interior? Are there damp carpets or a musty smell? Now thankfully you can replace the hood material itself and the frame, but respectively you're looking at 400 and then another 300 quid to do so. 
early miners came with a side valve engine or the 803cc A series. Now they have got their fans, but to be honest, they're not really powerful enough to keep up with today's traffic. So you're far better off with the later 948cc or 1098cc A series as offered in the Miner 1000. Now the first thing you want to be looking for is blue smoke on startup. That's going to indicate worn bores. Meanwhile, blue smoke under acceleration is going to be worn valve guides or valve stem seals. These engines work hard to keep up with modern traffic and if the cooling system's not in tip-top shape or it's a particularly hot day, head gasket failure through overheating unfortunately isn't uncommon. So you want to look for all the usual signs of head gasket failure, look in the cooling system and the oil for any of that unfortunate mayo on the caps. But thankfully this one is all good. Look at the condition of the cooling system itself, check the radiator isn't damaged and it's not leaking anything. Any rusty hose clips or split hoses should be replaced because try and drive one of these cars fast on a hot day. If your cooling system isn't up to scratch and you haven't yet had a head gasket failure, you might well cause it through the car overheating. A miner that doesn't leak oil is pretty much unheard of, but any conspicuously large puddles of oil are probably going to be a failed rear main crank seal or a front engine seal. Now you can change either of those and they're not too expensive, but they are fairly major jobs to do. Both the sumps and the rocker covers are known to drip over time, but again, the gaskets are cheap and easy to come by, but it won't necessarily guarantee you're not gonna get any oil weepage whatsoever. The 1098cc Miner 1000 is acknowledged to have the strongest gearbox of any miner, but crunchy gear changes are going to indicate worn synchros. Now, if it's just when you're changing gear, that can be lived with, but if the car jumps out of gear when you lift off the throttle, that indicates your gearbox is going to need either replacing or rebuilding. Don't assume that clutch judder is a symptom of a failing clutch. It could simply be a case of a slack steady cable between the gearbox and the front cross member. Have a good look at it, and if it is slack and needs replacing, it's a relatively easy and cheap job to do. Finally, with changing gears of these cars, double D clutching down into first is just part of the driving experience. And it's one of those classic car driving skills that takes time to master, but it's rewarding when you do. So don't be scared of it, practice it, refine and hone the skill, and it is a great part of the Morris Minor driving experience. The miner uses kingpin suspension, none of your ball joints here, and that means that you need to be regularly getting under the car to grease those kingpins up. If you're using the car more than once or twice a month, around every 1500 miles is generally accepted as a good kingpin greasing interval. For their age, miners have got superb steering, it's light and it's direct. But if yours is feeling a bit sloppy, then it could be an indication of worn out trunnions. And there's an easy check to see if yours are gonna need changing. Jack the front of the car up, grab hold of the front wheel and wiggle it top and bottom and see if there's what feels like a worn out wheel bearings worth of excess play in it. Now, if your trunnions do need replacing, it's a relatively easy and cheap job to do. And it's a great way to get started working on these simple little cars. If the back of the car is sagging towards the ground excessively, it's probably gonna be worn out really leaf springs but thankfully you can buy a complete leaf spring kit for around 200 quid and a few hours work again we'll see the car sitting pretty and driving so much nicer miners don't ride like a rolls royce unsurprisingly but nor do they ride like a horse and cart so if yours is feeling a bit bouncy and rickety over the bumps it's probably a sign that your miners lever arm dampers are past their best thankfully though reconditioned units are a simple and easy job to change over the miner uses unassisted drum brakes all round, and they are perfectly capable of pulling up what is a very light and certainly not very fast car. But if you are used to more modern machinery with servo assisted brakes, worry not, because there is a remote brake servo kit that you can buy for about 80 quid, and it makes driving these cars way easier in day-to-day -day traffic. Finally, seized wheel cylinders on those drum brakes are a fairly common occurrence, and a good way to check that yours are still working properly is to brake in a dead straight line and make sure the car doesn't weave tram line or snatch the wheel out of your hand. But as with anything when working on drum brakes, and indeed Morris Miners in general, if your wheel cylinders are seized and designed to fail, they are incredibly cheap, really easy, and satisfying to replace. Miners aren't the most luxurious cars in the world. You've got wipers, you've got lights, and you've got a heater fan. And if any of those aren't working, it's either going to be down to blown fuses or aged wiring that's just fallen apart and needs replacing. 
If, however, you want to have more powerful lights, a modern stereo, or a power socket to charge your phone up, that is going to put more load on the Weedy standard dynamo. But thankfully, an alternator upgrade kit is available for these cars. Miners don't come with hazard warning lights, and on today's roads, particularly with modern motorways, it's probably advisable to have them. But thankfully, an off-the-shelf Morris Miner hazard warning light kit is available, and it only costs you around 30 quid. It's easy to fit and gives you a discreet switch that tucks under the dash. Most miners also don't come with seat belts, and those that do probably only have little lap belts. But thankfully, you can buy off-the-shelf inertia real seat belts that bolt into a miner. They make these cars so much safer and so much more usable day to day, particularly if you want to put kids in the back. Finally, don't let a tatty interior in a miner put you off. You can buy a whole new carpet kit for these cars for 100 quid, and although you can buy new seat covers, they are a bit more expensive. You can buy front ones in all the standard shades, including the duotone colours, but you're going to be paying between 150 and 175 pounds each for those. New rear seat covers are also available, but again, budget around 350 pounds for a good one. Vinyl or leather, take your pick but it ain't gonna be cheap. So now you know what to look for, which miner should you buy? Well, the great thing about these cars is that they're still plentiful and they're still affordable. There's a miner for every budget. A saloon car restoration project can be bought for as little as around 500 quid. But considering those relatively low values of a roadworthy example and how costly a full restoration can be, it's well worth going into a resto with your eyes wide open and weighing up the financial viability of it. You may well be better off just buying a roadworthy example to begin with, unless you want to commit to a full restoration. If you want a roadworthy example, a two or a four door saloon can be bought from around two and a half thousand pounds these days, but approach with caution. Miners have been MOT exempt in the UK for quite some time now, and that does mean that some of them aren't perhaps as well maintained as they should be. We'd advise when buying any MOT exempt car to get the seller to put it through an MOT, because if they've got nothing to hide, then their car shouldn't either. Upwards from the roadworthy project cars, if you want the very best saloons on the market, you can pay upwards of £10,000. And if you want a fully restored car that may well be able to win a show somewhere, you can pay up to fifteen grand. Moving up to the Tora convertibles, they start at around six and a half to seven thousand pounds, and you can pay over and above fifteen grand for the best fully restored MAT chassis cars on the market. Now, as we've said before, there's nothing wrong with buying a converted saloon, but don't pay top money for a car that didn't leave the factory as a Tora. My favourite miner and the most popular is that wood frame traveller estate, and restoration projects start at around two and a half to three thousand pounds. But at that kind of money, you're in for a serious project. Pay £7,000 upward for a roadworthy example and the very best fully restored travellers are going to cost you around £20,000. Now of all the types of miners the travellers are the most financially viable restoration projects because they're worth the most at the end but as we've said on the other hand they are the most expensive to restore so once again and as ever weigh up whether a restoration project is financially viable or whether you'd be better off just buying a decent example to begin with. Whichever model you choose and however However much you want to spend though, the Morris Miner is a fantastic entry into classic car ownership. They're simple to work on, fun to drive, and they put a smile on the face of not just you, but people around you. This is one of those cars that everyone seems to love. And sometimes there really is no drive finer than a Morris Miner. This video is proudly sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Give them a call on 01480 400 889 for an insurance quote on your classic car. And don't forget to click the link in the video description to enter their latest competition.